Greetings Aquarians, hey welcome to your January 2020 reading with me. Thank you for all joining and congratulations on the new year. What did you do for New Year's Eve? Did you have a good, happy, safe time? Did you spend some time contemplating your new journey forward? Because that is what this is. This is a massive jump. It's, going, it's like being in hyperspace. By the time we get to the end of the 20s, you'll hardly recognize life. It will be so different. January astrology has a conjunction of Pluto, Jupiter and Saturn, which is a mind-blowing sound of change. That's what it heralds in. It's only happened twice in the last 2,000 years. So believe me, we are on the cusp of the age of Aquarius as well, which of course is your energy. This is all about new thoughts, new paradigms, new expansions, new timelines, concepts, understanding, the use of technology, of using intelligence, of being free of the previous bounds that you know held us all back especially fear-based ideas and concepts so Aquarius brings to us this whole new you know potency of using intellect instead of being subjugated and kept back in fear so we are walking into the age of Aquarius and leaving the Piscean age behind but with that I've done a little bit of um, intuitive work for you and the mantra that you guys received for January as we march into 2020 is the following. It is my birthright to live fully and freely. So there you are. And of course, this is coming into your uh, birthday period. So it's a really good time for you guys to set some sort of allegiance to yourself, to connect with your higher self, your spirituality you know, look to where you want to go for the next 10 years, how you want to achieve it, what your dreams and passions are. It's sort of, um, when it said it is my birthright to live fully and freely, I felt there was something about freedom coming there for some of you. It says some freedom of something coming that has been in the past, meaning there's been something holding you back or tethering you down or tying you down. Perhaps you were wanting to evolve and you haven't. Uh, perhaps you were stuck in something or a, or a certain principle or object or ideal or relationship or health issue and that hasn't been working for you. But it feels like this freedom is coming. Also the color yellow, which is intellect, and I've written down, use your mind, use your thoughts and your intellect to get you to where you want to go. Because as I say, we're merging into your timeline, the age of Aquarius. It will be very vastly different than the last age of the Piscean age. So Aquarians, what do we need to know for you for January for 2020 as we evolve into this new decade? Aquarius. Oh, very nice way to start. Spiritual union. Beautiful. Oh, <laughs> and the light. Oh, wow. These are two of the most sacred of the cards, the most beautiful, the most loved. Light is the sun, which we cannot live without, you know, and there's all this beautiful reflective light in both of those pictures. Oh, <laughs> light everywhere I'm getting so excited by the prospect of it oh my god fulfillment of wishes memories of love uh, triumph that's the chariot disruption and passion ignited what a lot of cards have come forth for you guys three major arcanas an ace the wish card the spiritual union and memories of love so they look to be if we just take this whole picture, there's a great deal of positivity in here. Um, I'm just trying to be assured that we can see all of these cards on the screen. Three in the cups here. This is love, emotions, relationships. And this is the wands, which is career or creative ideas or passions. And these are your three uh, major arcanas, the sun, the... Uh, chariot and the tower card so if we've arranged them now a little bit differently 
there's something in here about the memories of love could be a relationship that you have either had for a long time or since childhood that is a spiritually blessed union and it might be uh, growing in awareness or becoming more heightened or becoming back to a, a greater depth of union. It might be someone that you haven't seen in a long time or haven't been connected to in a long time that you are reconnecting with. So there is a possibility of that for some of you, that a past love or previous love is coming back into your life. It may even be for some of you, this is rather unusual to say, it might be that this is at the spiritual level, not the physical. So it might be that this person is not physically present, but that the union has created some amazing spiritual enhancement or ability to connect at the spiritual you know when we talk about the twin flame energy it's really the emanation of light or the connection to the cosmos to the whole of the universe and the sun is part of that the sun kind of connects us spiritually very much so so there's a possibility here that you have been through an enlightened period or an enlightened relationship and it might be someone from a past life even so so it could be a spirit relationship it might be a relationship that is in spirit it might be from someone who has passed over even that this memory of love and spiritual union is re elevated or it's reconnecting or it is giving you some sort of euphoria or bliss or learning lesson that is taking your soul to a heightened awareness place the fulfillment of wishes is is the wish card and again it's, it's connected with relationships or with love or with harmony also the wish card can often just be some sort of wish that is coming true so for you guys as new year's eve comes into view wherever you are make a wish upon a star and you've got stars up here even though that this is the sun make a wish and really feel into what it is you want to wish and remember be careful what you wish for so make sure that you think about it, which is what I said before, use your intelligence, use your mind and the power of that mind that you have to create this euphoric energy that is there for you to uplift. These whole bunch together, I have no doubt, have conglomerated to create some sort of buoyancy or um light or lesson or learning or knowledge or understanding there's a great gift that's coming within these cards that's sitting on the table and for each of you it's going to be slightly different but there is a gift somewhere within this and it's a gift of love but it may not have to necessarily be intimate passionate love it's the love of the soul it's the love of a greater cosmic awareness it's it's far greater than just two people because we've got the sun involved and it somehow could be connected back with the past it could be connected back with something you've done in the past or someone you were with in the past or going back to being like a child remembering the feelings of childhood memories or places that you've been or people that you saw yeah there's a wonderful opulence in those cards and a wonderful promise or of fulfillment of wishes and for some of you this could be a new person coming in who it will be like a spiritual union and it might be someone from the past but it looks as though it's gifted passion ignited could be new passion within a relationship uh, she's very ignited she's in great passion She's also ignited, if you see, from the heart. So it's not just physical lust or physical passion or sexual excitement. It's deep. It's right in the power of her soul, which is what these are up here. So this one falls into it as well. But she's slightly different in as much that she's from the wands, which is the creative sector of life and is often considered to do with our career or our concepts and ideas and what we are passionate about in life 
So for some of you, there may be a firing up or a rekindling or a reinstigation of your creative abilities, especially if you're in the artistic field, if you're writers or artists or you're producing something in life, even if you're producing a like a design or something very new, you're working on a new product because Aquarians do this. <laughs> Aquarians are inventors. So if you're inventing something new, this could be the time that this, this is fulfilled, you know? If you have been through the dark night of the soul, which is what the disruption card is, this is the tower telling you, you know, and remember this is for January, but these major arcana cards, they have a lot of energy that traverse further than just one short reading they tend to move through the course of time in their own wild way. But the disruption card feels like the dark night of the soul. It feels as though you have been through hell, that something has happened and collapsed. And oftentimes this can be a relationship or it can be at the workplace. It can be where you lose the ability to feel the passion anymore in your job or your career. It can be where there is a falling out of family members, of friends, of loved ones, of, a, of an intimate partner. But the disruption tells us it needed to happen because it wasn't built on firm foundations. There was nothing holding it upright in true honesty. It was held in some form of deceit and the deceit can never work because it's not balanced, it's not Based, it's not strong. So something takes a tumble, but out of that tumble comes triumph. The chariot, it's movement, and it's movement forward in a very fast paced way. It's also you regaining strength, regaining power, regaining authority, regaining passion. And there, look, there's your passion. And off you go. This card can represent travel. It can represent a new car. It can represent things with cars. Um, for some of you, this might be a job that requires travel. And it could be a new job for some of you. For some of you, you might be moving to go to a job like interstate or across country or even to another country. For some of you, you might be going on a road trip, traveling around the country and driving to get there. Also, just be cautious of your car at this point in time because sometimes it means a few issues can crop up like mechanical things or unexpected bills. But a lot of this is about your journey in life and regaining understanding at a spiritual level. Again, it's this rising up from the ashes, from this disruption card. It's understanding your innate inner strengths. It's feeling strong. It's move. Look at the movement. Look how fast he is traveling. Nothing holds him back. He's regained his composure, his excitement, his zest, his ideas, his power, his passion, everything. I am on the move. What was your um, message again? It is my birthright to live fully and freely. That's what he's doing. Wow, this is really magical, you guys. These cards alone almost don't need to go any further. There's so much energy exploding out of these cards into you to pick up this energy and to work it through your life and to see where it fits and how you are learning and what lesson you are taking and what you are leaving behind and what you energize things with. I will do a little bit, we'll do a little bit more, but quite honestly, there's, there's so much in there. Exactly, there's nothing to worry about. Release and surrender. Boom. Don't worry. The journey, the cosmic journey is opening up. The evolution is coming. The freedom the Aquarian freedom is coming. The planets are aligning to create this intense time of change. You are being released and surrendered from something that didn't serve you. 
whatever it is for you personally. The light is drawn back in where you regain your power and your freedom and your movement forward, which creates this passion in your life because you get a chance to fulfill your wishes and your spiritual union is reinvigorated through the seat of the soul with memories of love. And love is the key reason we are here. I think we will move just towards the finish of this reading. These cards are very powerful. I will um, do one and we, I will then read from the book. These are intense and they take a lot of deep reflection and time and understanding. So I just thought this was a really good time of the year to get these cards out so that you can all ponder upon the depth of them and the spectrum of them uh, as we move into this decade. So this is for Aquarius. Ascended Master Serapis Bay and Clear Calcite, Karmic Grace. Mm. So what I will do is I will find some clear calcite and I will zoom the camera in and I will read from the book. The number is 19, 9 and 1 is 10 and 10 is 1 which is new beginnings. This is a rhomboid calcite, that's the clear calcite stone. So we have Ascended Master Serapis Bay and Clear Calcite, Karmic Grace. We bring you the blessing of Karmic Grace. There are many ways to learn and grow. Some ways are joyful and some more challenging. Sometimes a challenge can best be resolved through profound struggle that forces you to transform in such a way that you can never go back to what has been. The struggle might have been deeply painful for the mind body and emotions. And yet what is gained from that experience is a multiplicity of blessings, personal power, freedom, insight, self-respect and wisdom. These qualities then help you live a better life where that past pain need not be repeated. Blessings can at other times be gained through joyful experience. Sometimes the struggle is what will bring you the greatest spiritual progress. Sometimes a more joyful path will be how you grow best. The universe loves you with such passion that you shall never be denied what you most need and what shall help you fulfill your divine destiny. The struggles we encounter in life can be challenging enough without adding unnecessary guilt shame or judgment into the mix. There are times when the path of life becomes easier, more flowing, effortless and shining with radiant grace. And in those moments we feel as though we are doing something right and the universe is affirming and validating us. Everything just falls into place and we feel blessed. What can be more difficult to accept at the, is that there is grace in the struggle too. The divine, in its infinite love for you, will empower you to fulfill your innate potential. For some, that may be a gentler journey of progress, less challenging to body, mind and soul. It may be entirely appropriate for a particular soul to be in a lifetime focused on tranquility and feeling supported, rather than being thrown crown chakra first into the upheaval, upheaval that typically accompanies intense spiritual transformation. There may be times in your life, even if you are one of the souls here to experience the challenge that frequently accompanies accelerated spiritual growth, where your path is gentler, brighter, more effortless. When this happens, it is what will serve you best. 
Even the most intense paths that include experience of trauma or abuse, perhaps especially those paths, will need times of lightness and joy. Your life path will unfold in whatever way will most benefit your soul's growth. What you need to remember is not to judge yourself or think that you are doing something wrong when life gets difficult. It is actually a sign that you are going through an accelerated phase of spiritual growth and the blessings that come from it will be what you need and want the most. There is a temptation to judge oneself in the struggles of life, to wonder, why am I not getting this? Why am I in pain? What am I doing wrong? This must be karma. And then guilt, shame and judgment make the situation even more difficult. Don't do this to yourself or to others. When there is a struggle, there is opportunity for breakthrough to be grasped by the soul. This opportunity can come to you through this method of growth. You'll have other times that are more joyful too, so there's no need to worry. Some souls choose to have lifetimes where much struggle characterizes the earlier phase of their life, preparing them for great work and a much lighter and more joyful experience in the second half of their life. If you have been puzzled by an experience in your life, say a difficulty or perhaps even effortlessness, and you are trying to make sense of it, relax. Accept that karma grace bestows upon you the best way to grow and manifest your divinity in every moment. You don't have to understand it, but rather accept it and trust it. You need to believe you are truly loved by the universe. And that is karmic grace. So whatever you're going through, whatever you have been through, however this tower, the disruption card, the dark night of the soul came in, disrupted, caused pain, anger, annoyance, trauma, whatever, if that's been happening to you, let it go. Don't judge yourself and don't judge others. This is part of your learning curve. If, on the other hand, you have experienced pure light and pure bliss in relationships and harmony, again, accept it as being part of your journey. This is your life and this is what you chose. Judge not. Enjoy. Enjoy your journey. So thank you Aquarius. I hope you guys have really, really enjoyed your reading. It's been a wonderful experience. It's been beautiful from my end. I wish you all the very, very best for 2020. I love it when you leave your comments. Thank you for subbing and liking the channel. Hit the notification button. That way you'll never miss an upload when it comes. Much love and light everybody. Namaste.